All right, this is a sample problem. It's of the type that um, may ask you at what temperature does a reaction become spontaneous or non-spontaneous. There is one of these on the practice test that Dr. Dockery made up as well as in some of the practice sheets that I've posted on our D2L. But anyway, so this type of question comes up when um, enthalpy and entropy, when one's favorable and one's unfavorable. Um, there, of course, at that point, spontaneity depends on temperature, and so there's always a temperature at which the reaction switches over from being spontaneous to non-spontaneous or vice versa. So in this case, both are negative. Um, enthalpy is favorable. Entropy is not favorable. So let's talk about the concept of that first. So looking at our equation, delta G equals delta H minus T delta S, which, by the way, is the only way to predict spontaneity. And if I plug in the signs for each of them, um, obviously the entropy term is unfavorable, um, and so we want to minimize it. Um, I have a question mark by delta G because it depends on temperature. And so because we want to minimize the entropy term, the only way to do that is to lower the temperature which minimizes that whole T delta S term. And so keep that in mind, we want low temperatures. Okay, so there's the conceptual stuff. Here's the math that goes with it. So here's a question you might be asked. At what temperature will this reaction become spontaneous or it may say non-spontaneous? Um, I'm gonna divert for just a quick minute um, to explain what I'm getting ready to tell you. If you were to look at a free energy curve over the time of a reaction, so on the left we would have reactants, on the right we would have products, and let's say it's a spontaneous reaction. So that would mean delta G is decreasing, right? So sliding down the hill um, and going in the reverse direction, it would be non-spontaneous. Delta G would be positive. Well, the, what I really want to point out here is at the bottom of this curve, curve delta G equals zero. Okay, it's flat, so there's no change, no slope. And what does it mean when delta G equals zero? Well, it means the system is at equilibrium, which we haven't really learned much about. Um, but basically, at equilibrium, you're at the lowest possible energy point, and so there's no driving force. There's no energy that can be used to do any work because you're already at the lowest, most favorable point. So at equilibrium at this low point, delta G equals zero. So now let's go back to the equation with that in mind. So if we set delta G equal to zero and rearrange the, the equation for a free energy, um, so I'm just adding T delta S to both sides and then I'm um, simplifying it to solve for temperature. The bottom line and what you may just wanna remember because you, I'm not gonna ask you to go through this whole derivation is that temperature is delta H divided by delta S. Okay, so let me show you what that means if I actually plug in the values for this reaction. Before I do that, I wanna point out that enthalpy is almost always given in units of kilojoule, entropy is almost always given in units of joule. So make sure these two are in the same units before you try combining them. So onward to plugging and chugging. So here is the equation I just derived. Sorry for how unprofessional this is. I'm just trying to do this quickly. Um, so again, here it is. Temperature is delta H over delta S. So I change them both to kilojoules. And I get a temperature of 470 K. That would be the temperature at which the reaction would switch from spontaneous to non-spontaneous. If you want to be a little bit more sophisticated, I mean, just giving that temperature would give the turning point. But if you went on to say you'd be even more impressive, below this temperature, the reaction is spontaneous. Above this temperature, it's non-spontaneous. That's it.